Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about State of Decay 2, and why I think, instead of having one giant map, it is three separate maps. Now, if you don't know, State of Decay 1 had a very big map. Three cities, all connected by roads and farmland. And now State of Decay 2, they got rid of that. The, if you combine the space of the maps, the, the, the collective map is bigger. A lot bigger, and it's a lot more full of stuff. But the maps are all separated. And it, it, you know, it can get kind of annoying because the valley has places, you know, that has, like, let's just say guns. You want guns. The valley has guns. But you live in Drucker County, or the plateau, or you live in the hills, you know. Can't do anything about it. But there is, just watching how the game plays out, there's a reason that they're separated, that the areas are all different. Now, in case you don't know, again, if you uh, if you beat the game with your hero, you actually just, the game says you can't play that community anymore, you make another one. So you make another one, and you get buffs, and all the radio, like Red Talon and Sasquatch and stuff, continues on, the story continues on, and you can use up to three of your original survivors. So, what I noticed was... I, you know, I played through the valley in my first playthrough, and the valley was kind of eh for me, because it kind of looks like the original State of Decay game, right? But I was like, oh cool, this is just, you know, a new map, I'm going through the new map. I really like the mechanics, so I ended up beating it. And I played another group, and they spawned in the valley, and I was like, I don't want to deal with this again. And I eventually moved them to Drucker County, the plateau. And the plateau looks so different that I'm having just as much fun, um playing Drucker County Plateau with my, my my second community as I did with my first one in the valley. And it kind of opened my eyes to something. And that's the original State of Decay, I, it got boring to play. Um, it got boring to play over, you know, multiple games because you had the same bases, right? You had the, the church, the kind of weird house thing that was everywhere. The, I think it was the Dakito store and like the warehouse and some other, the, the bear house thing in the middle of the county with the, where there was no zombies, right? You had those bases. And then you always, whenever you started a game, even in Breakdown, you always started at some portion of this map. Oh, I've been here before. I've been here before. I've been here before, right? And there's kind of this thing of, if you needed ammo, you went to this part of the map. If you needed materials, you went to this part. If you needed, if you just wanted to collect stuff, you went to this part, right? And it, you know, there's a strategy to all the maps. There, the, all the the whole map. There was a very definite strategy that you used. And now, with these three maps, you're confined to each map. So each map has its own set of bases, which by the way, all look unique and are really cool. The baseball field is really cool. The strip mall, right? The brewery, all really cool bases. And you know, you sit there and you play this one place, right? And if you get bored of it, you get to go to another place, completely new place that ha honestly, every map seems like it has more stuff in it, like more, more lootable houses, less empty space than the original game map. I mean, even the valley, man. I felt like there was as much stuff going on in the valley as there was in the first map of State of Decay, which was huge, right? But now with these three individual maps that are pretty much just as big as the last game, you're confined to one, and, it, and I think what it is, is it protects the players from themselves, okay? So, it is my opinion, from my experiences, I've only done Plateau, half of Plateau and Valley, that Drucker County is a better area than the Valley. Okay? But, if I'm going from Drucker County to the Valley, if it was all one big map, I loot all of Drucker County, and then I decide, oh, gotta go to the Valley, right? Then it transitions from the mountains to the Valley... Then it's like, oh, I gotta, you know, go to the gun store in the valley. Then I go back to Drucker County. Then, oh, I gotta go to the gun store in the foothills. I go to, you know, foothills. That I just get used to seeing the scenery over and over and over again. 
and it gets boring. All right, State of Decay 1, as cool as it was, got boring to me because of seeing the same visuals over and over and over again, right? If you really think about it, you have the plateau area, the foothill area, and the valley area in State of Decay 1, but it all looks the same because they had to build all these spots where you enter them. So all these three separate maps isolate you into one area where you have to strategize using only that one area. Once you use up that area dry, then you have to decide if you want to move. There's a penalty to moving too, which is you have to deal with the blood plague in the next area you live in. So they really want you to stay in that area and deal with the blood plague in that area, right? And it starts to stress out your resources. You have to start trading more, be more creative, right? And so they make you, instead of doing the best possible strategy, which would be literally, if they had no limits, the best possible strategy would be to loot all the specialized buildings, the greenhouses, the gun stores, the sheds, the this, the that. You know, that's the best possible strategy. They're protecting you from yourself. XCOM, uh, one of the XCOM games, forcefully gave you a, a timer, a amount of turns you could take to beat the mission. They did that because if you did it slow and steady, which is how everyone would do it, I bet, the game would be so boring. This game, if the whole map was connected and you could go to these specialized areas, it would be so boring, right? State of Decay 1. Think of how much ammo you ended up with and guns you ended up with at the end of the game. I remember playing Breakdown and I, I couldn't, it wouldn't let me store any more guns because my guns, it, I filled up the gun locker. In this game, when I, excuse me, when I finished my first save file, I was still trying to conserve bullets because I didn't have access to all the other resources in the other two areas. So what they're doing is they're confining you to this area to give you that extra challenge, to give you the challenge of having to deal with where you're at and what you have, okay? Because like a half hour driving, driving 15 minutes to go to a gun store in another town and 15 minutes back, a half hour to get loot one gun store is definitely not as productive as making you go through house after house after house for a half hour. You're probably going to, honestly, you're going to probably find more stuff more useful stuff, and you have to deal with all the stuff at home and stuff. All the stuff at home. Beyond that, now that they have the three areas separate, they don't have to build all these weird transition areas. Remember the military area in um, State of Decay 1, the North City? We had to blow up the bridge, or blow up the, the gate on the bridge, right? Th there was like a transition into the mountains into that area. Now, they didn't have to do that and so they got they didn't have to spend time building these empty areas that really like don't make sense what you're traveling that way what it, what else are they going to put in they like playing this game they put in a lot of stuff that already you wouldn't expect to be in there now like these buildings i'm talking buildings and loot drops and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff in here that i didn't expect to be in so to add that extra transition space, it's just it's just gonna be the same, right? Going to the specialized county area on the way there, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put no buildings so it's far away and boring, or you're gonna put generic buildings where it no meaning, right? So they got rid of all the transition areas which were meaningless in the first game. So that's that's kind of why I think that the game is uh, separated into three areas. I know this was a bit longer of an explanation than I usually do. That. That's kind of what I was getting at. But let me know what you think of the three areas in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I actually really like it. The more I play it, the more I realize that it's there to make the game challenging. But I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam it post of whatever I decide to make.